When it comes to Roblox mitts, there are a lot of users that are considered underrated. Some of these said mitts do fit this title, having put in enough effort to be worthy of public recognition. In this video, we will be going over 3 of these underrated Roblox mitts. Just to know, this list will contain mitts that were either suggested by viewers or found on my own. So sit back, relax, and let's get into it. The first mitt that we'll be talking about is one known as Attic. Attic is a smaller Roblox mitt that is best known for his games as well as his Roblox group. The latter is associated with their mitt which will be explained later. Attic's mitt is pretty historical due to how long the account has been around. Attic's story dates all the way back to November 11, 2008, which makes the account almost 14 years old. An interesting fact is that this was also Veterans Day 2008. Anyway, Attic's account is one of the oldest for a Roblox mitt. Not that much would happen until late 2021, when he would start developing his mitt. In late August, Attic created his signature game, Attic's Dwelling. We'll briefly go over this game in a bit. Around two months later, a second game will be created, which is named Tranquility. Attic is a pretty active mitt, having been last online on June 27, 2022. Expect this to change as time goes on. In regards to Attic's appearance, his avatar currently consists of an all yellow skin tone along with the steel surveillance goggles face accessory, the office worker alt shirt, the suit for men pants, and the robot animation pack. In my opinion, this avatar looks pretty professional and like your typical Roblox Smith outfit. It's not bad at all and has effort put into it. Overall, I give Attic's avatar 9 out of 10 for looking very good with the items that it has. Attic has quite a few games, and by that I mean 16 games. Because of this, we're only going to be going over one of his games. Attic's most popular game is Attic's Dwelling, which has over 19,000 place visits. Expect this to increase over time. Attic's Dwelling was made on August 21st, 2021 and was last updated on June 18th, 2022. If anyone is curious as to what's in the game itself, there isn't too much to see. The player will spawn outside of a house in the middle of the woods. One can then walk towards the house via a designated path. Let me just say, the inside of Attic's home is pretty detailed. It includes several rooms, quite a bit of furniture, lots of notes all over the place, an attic with lots of boxes, and decor on the walls. When one enters either bedroom, they will see a mirror that has a working reflection. In these same rooms, one can do a thing that causes creepy noises to play in the background. In the living room, a secret word can be typed in chat. Doing this will open up a secret door. Inside this secret room, one can find a lot of notes. All of these said notes are dated between 1971 and 1987. Therefore, it is recommended to read the notes in chronological order. This room has quite a few boxes lying around. Anyway, the outside environment looks very cool, and nature-like. It's also pretty detailed, which can cause lag for some players. Just keep that in mind when playing the game. Speaking of the outside environment, there's an area that you can walk through to leave the main map. This part isn't barricaded, which allows the player to walk out of the map and view it from the outside. Apart from that, there isn't much else to see in-game. Attic is known to have several siblings, which are as follows. Abel Brzezinski, Abigail Linton, and Earl Linton. They are ranked under family in Attic's group, The Dwelling. These aren't Attic's only family members though. Some other relatives include Daphne Linton, Winfred Wolf, and Oscar Wolf. We'll get more in depth about this in a future video. As for trivia, this is just extra facts that are relevant enough to make it onto the video. So, let's get into it. The first piece of trivia is that Attic's account was made by one of his family members. However, Attic only started using it in 2021. There is a huge gap in time between the account's creation and it being used. The second and final piece of trivia is that Attic's dwelling is said to be located somewhere in Poland. That does help explain the home style and the environment around it. Overall, Attic Smith is pretty underrated and deserving of more attention. The second myth that we'll be going over is one known as Valorial. 
Valorio is a Roblox myth that is best known for their game of the same name, as well as for their Japanese-influenced style. They are not to be confused for Valerna, a character in Oranin's myth. There isn't a whole lot known about Valorio, as they seem to still be a work in progress. However, that doesn't mean they shouldn't be talked about. Valorio's story dates all the way back to May 19th, 2019. This marks the date that they created their Roblox account. The following day, Valorio created their signature game, Valorio. The myth would receive a few minor updates between 2019 and early 2020. On February 5th, 2020, Valorio would post the following in a group shout. Second renovation in progress, this might take a while. Over two years later, this remains the most recent group shout. Apart from that, Valorio was last online on March 17th, 2022. This shows that she's not completely inactive, as she has logged onto Roblox within the past year. However, expect this to change in the future. Talking about Valorio's appearance, her avatar currently consists of an all yellow skin tone along with the Geisha hair hat, the Kitsune mask face accessory, the Year of the Dragon Lantern gear, the Hanayo Koizumi Love Live School shirt, the Hanayo Koizumi Love Live School pants, and the Roblox girl torso. In my opinion, this avatar does fit very well with Valorio's style. The clothing, hairstyle, and gear fits the theme of a Japanese-influenced mid. It really appeals to me and just looks great. Overall, I give Valorio's avatar a 10 out of 10 since it does a really good job of portraying the mid's character. As for Valorio's games, she currently has one game. If you didn't catch on to it, that game is Valorio. It has almost 3,000 visits as of July 2022. Valorio was created on May 20th, 2019 and was last updated on March 30th, 2020. Less than a year passed before the game stopped receiving updates. Despite this, Valorio herself has logged onto Roblox since then. Anyway, because I can, I'll quickly be talking about what can be found in game. The player spawns inside of a futuristic room with a huge window, a door to the left, and several shelves with body parts. It is likely this area could be an assembly area for bodies. Throughout the game, a flying vehicle can be heard passing by the facility. It's not that important, but still worth pointing out. To the left of the spawn area, one can walk through the door to access another part of the game. This part of the map contains a pretty long hallway with more body parts seen on the walls. Lights can also be seen on the floor of this part. When one gets to the end, they will encounter a single room that contains a body similar to that of Valorio's laying on a table. This creates the theory that someone is making clones in this facility. Apart from this, there's not much else to see in game. As with most Roblox myths, there is some trivia that one should know about Valorio. So, let's get into it. The first piece of trivia is that there are two associated Roblox accounts, Gozu Guard and Mezu Guard, that appear to be guards. Specifically, they are either Valorio's personal guards or guards of the city that appears in Valorio's game. The second and final piece of trivia is that Valorio's minting game has been confirmed to be inspired by the manga series Ghost in the Shell. It becomes clear once you look into the manga itself. Overall, Valorio is a Roblox myth that is underrated and deserves more attention. The third and final Roblox myth that we'll be talking about is one known as the King of Garden. The King of Garden is a Roblox myth that is best known for his three associated games, as well as his YouTube channel that helps tell the myth's lore. The King of Garden has been around for a little while, which has allowed him to develop a small yet dedicated fanbase. The King of Garden's story can be traced all the way back to August 16th, 2020. This marks the date that he created his Roblox account. On the same day, the King of Garden started development on The Garden and Nedrag Et. Several months later, he would create his YouTube channel of the same name. The first video on the said channel will be posted in late 2020, although it has since been taken down. In late November, the King of Garden created his third game, The Lab. Moving into 2021, many different Roblox YouTubers would begin noticing the King of Garden's myth and making videos on it. This would help the King of Garden gain popularity within the Roblox myth community. It would also be during 2021 that the King of Garden would begin getting ranked in various different myth hunting groups. Nowadays, the King of Garden is relatively active as he logs onto the account a few times per month. 
However, expect this to possibly change in the future. Moving on to the King of Gardens appearance. His avatar currently consists of an all green skin tone along with the Forest King's paper crown hat, the Sprout Sorority hat, and the old school animation pack. In my opinion, this avatar is pretty cute because of its simplicity. It fits with the theme of other myths such as Wanderers of the Field and Grocery Gang, as well as other plant based myths. Despite the fact that his avatar doesn't have any clothes, it still looks like some effort was put into it. Overall, I give the King of Gardens avatar a 7 out of 10 since it isn't the greatest, but still a decent looking avatar. As for the King of Gardens games, there are 3 that are currently playable. The Garden, Nedrak Et, and The Lab. The most popular of the 3 is The Garden with 23,000 place visits as of July 2022. Expect this to change in the future. The game was made on August 16th, 2020, and was last updated on June 1st, 2022. The Garden is still receiving frequent updates, which shows the King of Gardens activity. Since I can, I'll briefly talk about what can be found in-game. The player spawns on a group of small islands near the main town. To get to the main town, the player will have to jump across some small plots of land. If one falls in the water, they can simply climb up the ladder. Once the player gets to the main plaza, they'll see a lot of houses that can be explored. Along with this, several green figures can be seen standing around the map. Some of these figures are blocking the doorways of certain houses, which prevents the player from going in them. Anyway, several of these houses have notes that tell a part of the mid story. In fact, one of the houses on the right side of the town has a TV and VHS player on top of some of the crates, along with a note that talks about finding VHS tapes from a lab. Moving on, there are a few smaller islands that can be found within the map. One of the islands to the left of the map contains a few graves with the word The Yard written on the ground. This is likely the burial site of several people related to the story. The other island simply contains a giant tree, which is important to the King of Garden. The main attraction of the game is at the end of the town, which leads to a house on top of a hill. At the bottom of this said hill, several notes can be found, one of which talks about a secret cave near the area and the other simply stating home. After going up the hill, one can enter the house. One notable thing that can be seen is a couple photos which depict certain residents of the town as well as the King of Garden. It doesn't contain too much but it's still something I wanted to mention. Going to the back of the house, one can find a sign that reads do not enter. Assuming that the player can't read, they can walk up to a door at the bottom of the path. However, a key is needed to open it. There is more to the game but it'll be discussed in a future video. One thing I will say is that the garden is a bit graphically demanding which can cause lag for certain players. It is not recommended to play the garden on weaker devices. Like a lot of Roblox myths, there is some trivia that one should know about the King of Garden. So, let's get into it. The first piece of trivia is that in several deleted videos, certain parts of the myth's lore was revealed. Some of this includes the King of Garden's life as a human and him being a head scientist of Project Garden. The second and final piece of trivia is that the King of Garden has been confirmed to be an only child. This was revealed through a now deleted video on the myth's official channel. Overall, the King of Garden is a Roblox myth that is underrated and deserves more attention.